take a look at this hybrid car. So this is a 2000, 2007 Prius, and uh, this vehicle is a smart is a smart key equipped vehicle. So you'll notice that there's no ignition switch. The key is actually in my pocket right now. If I press the brake button and power, the vehicle will turn on. The vehicle's actually on right now. And the thing I wanted to show you about the hybrid is, is when I put this in gear, um, we'll actually be able to drive now. And we're just going electric. Oh, an electric, wow. Now the gas engine kicked on. Right now the gas engine is, it's actually not showing it, but it's probably going to charge the... Uh, Wow, that's amazing. Charge the car, but check surroundings for. Wow, it's got a backup camera. Camera, interesting. Yeah. To put the vehicle in park on this one, it's a push button. So I, you can shift with this little knob here, and then uh, after you selected your gear and all that, when you want to put it in park, you hit the P button for park. This right now is showing you one of the features of the hybrid. The uh, engine is actually using uh, charging the. Uh, the like battery. In order to go back to the battery, so um, depending on the speed and, and what mode the car is in, it can use either just the gas engine, it can use the gas and electric engine, or it can just use the electric engine. And that's where we have to worry is, as uh, responders to vehicles like this, is um, you potentially could come up on a vehicle where you know it's running on electric power and it's silent. You wouldn't be able to tell the vehicle is on. Oh, and it could roll on us or try to travel or something? Well, you, if you hit the accelerator, it'll drive. Like right now, I could drive the car. You see the little green indicator that says ready? <laughs> <coughs> little indicator that says ready there on the dash? Yes. Mm -hmm. That is an indicator that this car is on. So if you see that, you want to secure the car. And it just, the engine only starts to charge the battery up. Or if you're driving, it can be on as well, depending on what the car is trying to do. So the vehicle's in park. I'm going to go ahead and turn the car off so there's not okay. a bunch of exhaust in here. Are we going to get the chance to see any of the battery or anything? Yeah, I'm going to show you the other features of the vehicle. So okay. I'm going to go ahead and start under the hood. Okay. So to explain um, a little bit about the hybrid concept, hybrid, if you look it up, by definition, it's when you bring two things together and you make a new. Um, we have a, a gasoline combustion engine similar to what you'd have in your car. But we also have an electric motor here. Um, this car happens to run um, a parallel system. So it can run on just the gas, it can run just the electric, or it can run both at the same time. Some run in series, meaning that they both have to be operational. In this car, it can go either or, so you can have a, a completely silent vehicle and be running. What I found in driving this around town was going down Egan Drive, 55 miles an hour, usually the gas engine was running, but when you hit Norway Point and come down to about 45 miles an hour, then it typically is running on just electric. So, uh, when the car is sitting in an intersection, it's just electric. The engine generally shuts off, so, if you've been driving, because the batteries are full. So, <clears throat> if you came up to someone that was incapacitated at an intersection, you know, a drunk that fell asleep, um, someone had a heart attack, someone hit a light pole, um, and they were not able to secure the vehicle, then our biggest danger is this vehicle could actually be on right now, and you wouldn't know it. It would just be dead silent, just It'd like this. It would be dead silent. And so in moving a patient, you might accidentally hit the accelerator, or um, the car could potentially drive. So chalking this vehicle is very important. Turning the vehicle off is very important, but also because it has a smart key, which just has to be in proximity to the, key to work, or the car to work, you want to get this key about 25 feet away from the vehicle. That 25 feet is a, is a safety buffer in there, but you'll see the car does stuff on its own also. The other thing to be cognizant of is if this car is on and we have the hood open like this, the gas engine, like I said, could come on at any time. There's a fan belt and moving parts in there, so it is you know, somewhat intimidating if you're not careful where you put your fingers. The fuse box? The fuse box. It takes me a second to hit them. Um, one of the features we'll talk about in our PowerPoint presentation are, are the fuses. In this particular vehicle, one of the things you want to do is you want to secure the uh, HEV fuse here. It's a 20 amp fuse located right here. Uh, by pulling that, that will shut down the high voltage system for this car. 
This particular car has about a five minute lag time that it can still be powered up after you pull the fuse and shut it off. But by pulling the fuse, you eliminate one of the factors that could hurt us. So it's important to access this fuse panel. If you forget what I'm saying today, if you open this up and you forget HB or HEV or whatever the, the type of fuse is for that car, you just pull them all. John, point again to the main fuse. On this car, it's that fuse. Okay. But if you forgot that and you came across this situation, just you pull just them all. Pull right? them all. Okay. And that way you eliminate some of the, the chance of, of having an electrocution issue. Other things you want to know about, you never want to get inside the electric motor. You cannot get electrocuted by this unless you actually remove a cover and start getting into the electric motor. So if you were overhauling this car, you wouldn't want to get in there. You also probably want to avoid taking a halogen point and driving it through the hood into this because you could get electrocuted then <coughs> if the car were running. What kind of voltage is it running? Uh, I don't know the voltage of this car per se. I know some hybrids can run up to 60,000 volts when they're running in between the batteries and the motor. Anything that's uh, indicated in a bright orange cable like this is a high voltage cable. Okay. You do not ever want to cut a high voltage cable. Never cut the orange cables. Right. Okay. You'll want to look underneath the undercarriage to see where that cable runs from here back to the battery because this does run back to the battery which is in the rear of the vehicle. So that's under the hood. Now we'll go back to the Normally there's carpet here. I pull the carpet out, then I pull this out. And that's the battery pack right there. Which is where this this, this metal box contains this is the, the battery. battery. Pack. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know if that lifts up, but um, basically you never ever want to open that battery pack. You never want to try to overhaul it. You never want to get into that battery pack. If you were to get into that you could potentially be electrocuted, so avoid the battery pack situation. There have been reports of uh, nickel metal hydride battery fires, and uh, in, the, in that case, the manufacturer recommends just fighting with copious amounts of water. The thing you want to avoid, though, is that the battery packs have uh, their nickel metal hydride, and they have a chemical in them that's uh, very alkaline. They have a pH of around 13.5. So um, it's extremely do, alkaloid, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, so it's like live burns. I don't know if caustic would be the right word to use or not, yeah. but it would it would definitely do some damage to you. So you want to avoid getting any clear liquids on you from the battery pack. If it were to get on you, you would want to flush it with copious amounts of water. Um, if you get any on your equipment, you want to wash it with copious amounts of water. Because this is a hybrid, a lot of people focus on the high voltage system, which is appropriate because that is what poses the most danger to you um, as far as the electrical system. But like a standard car, you still want to secure the power to the 12 volt battery. This car does have a 12 volt battery. The 12 volt battery for this car is located under this patch right here. If you sit over there, you can look over and you can see the positive cable back here. So you want to cut your negative cable like you would on a standard car and then your positive. The reason you want to secure the 12 volt battery is because the 12 volt battery powers your airbag system. Your 12 volt battery also powers components of the high voltage system. So by securing the 12 volt battery, again, all you're doing is eliminating some of the factors that endanger us when we do auto extrication, car firefighting, etc. So you want to make sure you secure the battery power here.